Wilson. Okay, and your title, please. Uh, I'm a minority leader in the uh, House of Reps. Okay. So tell me, um, tell me what you've been hearing. Let's start with parents. What have you been hearing from parents in regards to these disruptive incidents in Oregon classrooms? I think the thing that I hear more uh, about from the parents is the trauma that their children suffer when a class is emptied. I think one of the questions that they have that they don't understand is why is the disruptive child not pulled from the classroom? Why is that child left in the classroom and others, all others, are pulled out? Because a lot of them, uh, when they come home, they're talking about this. Uh, they basically lost uh, education day because of the shock of it. In many cases, these are kids from, I'd say, first grade, maybe kindergarten, but first grade through third and fourth. And the kids are traumatized when they see that kind of activity in classroom. Do you believe teachers are able to handle this properly under the current rules? You know, I... Um, I think that they have to live by the rules, and the rules are that uh, the disruptive child will be left in the classroom, and the kids that have not been part of that disruption are leaving and going somewhere else and trying to adapt the rest of their day. Do you believe this, that that's working? I don't think so. I really think that we have to do whatever is possible to reverse that process. I mean, you know, those of us who uh, went to the public school system ourselves, we remember how it used to be. And that was the child who was having a problem. I mean, back in our day, sometimes got a paddling in front of everybody else or in the principal's office. But, you know, we're kind of past that with some of our children, and we can't do it that way. But I think uh, our kids would be better served if the, uh, the child who's having the difficulty was removed and the others let stay behind. Right, exactly. Um, so, is it correct that all summer you've been hearing about this issue? We have. As part of the Joint Committee on Student Success, we've been all over everywhere for really the last nine months. And this was not something that we heard everywhere, but we did hear it in significant locations. And uh, I think it caused all of us to take a moment and look at one another and realize that, wow, this, this school system is a lot different than the one that we took part in back in our day. Absolutely. Um, what kind of, we, we've heard from several um, stakeholders, and they've called this crisis levels, that the, that the disruptive incidents, it's at a crisis level. Do you agree with that? I'm not sure that I would call it a crisis level, but on the other hand, I don't think it should ever happen. You know, I don't think that our children should be pulled out of class and sent to the gymnasium or the library or something like that because essentially it ruins the education day. The plan is out the window for that day. And so I think just common sense would be that, uh, and I know sometimes it's not going to be easy, but the child who is having the issue needs to be removed from that class. Would you like um, to see something introduced this session, you know, allowing that to happen, or will you be introducing something? You know, personally, since I'm off of the Education Committee at this point, I'm going to leave that to those who are on, but uh, it's certainly something that should be addressed. And whether it's going to be addressed through rule or whether it's going to be addressed through statute, it's something that there needs to be a public debate on. Because right now it seems to happen behind closed doors. A lot of people don't know about this. And so this is, I think, perfect the kind of subject that should be discussed in the legislative process. Do you think this is a, um, you know, this is something Democrats and Republicans can come together on? I would think so. You know, this is one of those things, and there are those things, where we can listen to issues and it doesn't break down into partisanship. I, I, I think this would be a, a good subject. Okay. Um, what about some examples? Have you heard any stories from him? you know, from teachers or from parents about things that have happened inside the classroom? Uh, n nothing that is really unusual. I, you know, those who have been involved in this process tell their stories and they're all very similar. They're very similar. I think in some cases the children that um, are having problems in the classroom are having very, very deep problems. Problems that we may not have seen at all when we were going to school kids who are coming to school, kids who've been affected by the drug life in their homes, 
Uh, we always had tough homes in our neighborhood. We certainly did, but we didn't, we didn't have children that had problems that were so significant, so profound, that without professional help, they may never be able to adapt to this kind of situation. Mm -hmm. What else do you want to add uh, about this subject? I mean, why is it so important to get this figured out in the next couple of months? Uh, yeah, the, the reason why I think it's important is um, it's a personal thing. You know, I was last night visiting my, uh, my children and my grandchildren, and I've got four-year-old kids, uh, twin girls, who are going to private school because uh, a number of reasons, but one of those reasons is the fact that you don't tend to have these problems in private school. And parents make decisions based on safety, things like this. And so I want to see it discussed because I do have grandchildren in the public school system as well as the private system. And uh, I would simply like to see the public school system acknowledging this issue and giving our children a better chance at a good education. If they don't get a hold of this, you're going to find more kids taking part in an exodus, moving to private school or other forms of schooling to get away from the potentials here.